In this week's podcast, we discuss photography safety and photographers asking for coffee money. Is that really a good thing? Oh, by the way, don't adjust the volume. My voice is a little bit quiet for the first seven or eight minutes of the podcast, but then the audio sorts itself out. Enjoy the podcast. So, we're here again, aren't we? That yeah, time, that time like, again. Yeah, the, the following week. The following week. We're all wearing exactly <laughs> yeah, the same clothes. So close. Yeah, I know. Honestly. I honestly. should have washed, really, between <laughs> weeks. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I think that you, you touched on that. We're not going to hide the fact that we are filming these consecutively, yeah. and there's a main reason for that. And, and well, if uh, miles it, away. Yeah, <laughs> it's, like it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's <laughs> a five-hour trip down to, because you live in Wales, don't you? Yeah, so make it worth my while. It's yeah. a five-hour yeah. trip uh-huh. here and a five-hour trip back, and yeah. we're going to be alternating. So yeah, that's 10 hours and, driving yeah. plus this in one day. Yeah, and me and Gaz are going to be coming yeah. down to you. Yeah. So well, we're we should going... be doing it. We should alternate. Mm. And then have a neutral place. Yeah, because you live, you two live both up here. Yes. So this sucks for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, have a neutral place yeah, yeah. in the middle. Yeah, mm. like. So, um, like we travel, you travel, and a neutral place. Croatia yeah. or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I think so, yeah. yeah. No, the neutral place, I think yeah. we should have at your house. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get at my house. That's perfect. You don't worry, yeah, it's, yeah, a, it's yeah. another five miles towards, uh, towards yeah. where you live. Oh, yeah, staggering distance. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah, so yeah. that's the reason you'll see us in the same clothes, isn't it? What have you been up to, Paul? I have not been up to anything. <laughs> <laughs> what si- are you talking about since photo nerds? Well, what, yeah, what's happening with your vlogging? Yeah, I am vlogging now. I am, I'm ones. back out vlogging again and and Instagramming. I, 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 and Instagramming. Uh, the, uh, one of the main things that I'm doing with the Instagram is I'm trolling through my hard drive. Trolling people. It? Trolling. Trolling. <laughs> trolling. <laughs> You're trolling, trolling. Yeah, yeah. Uh, trolling through my hard drive and finding images that I just dismissed previously, and also trying to make my into Instagram. Trying to, trying to polish some turds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but try and make it look a little, little bit prettier yeah, and just yeah. a little bit more grouped together in the styles and genres of yeah. shots. So at the moment I'm doing coastlines and I'll do a, 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 a series of three of those yeah. and then I've done a series of woodland and stuff like that. But yeah, I am vlogging again and I want to make that more regular. Uh, Great but, to see you back on there. Yes, mate. thank you. you. Thank you very much. But you don't ever watch me, Gareth. <laughs> no, it's nice to see your name pop up every now and again. It's you don't a, even deny that. No, you don't deny it. You're, you're meant to say, of course I do. Of course I do, mate. Yeah, yeah. I'm incognito. Yeah, I do. Yes, yeah. but yeah. I'm that troll. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're the one that talks about being baseball. That's like. our clickbait title, yeah. by the way. Yeah. We should both point and have a broken looking face. Then I know. Be, yeah. Yeah. But I have we just, got, we're exposing the internet YouTube troll. It's Paul Johnson. That's it. I have got a couple of. Uh, ideas that, that you'll see coming online. I'm not going to. I'm not going to talk about it quite yet when it comes because I won't have it be able to talk about it when it mm. comes online. But I've got something that maybe will tie into the limitation of time that I've got. So I'm looking forward to that, and I'm looking forward to working with you guys. But I have again when we were here previously, I was spending a lot of time in the woods and even. Uh, I, I'm absolutely loving that, and it's got nothing to do with being influenced by anything or anyone other than the fact that I've just fallen in love with the, Back with the to genre. Nature. Yeah, I, I yeah. just I just love it. It's isolation, and, isn't it? And, it's and it's taken me a year and a half and I'm just starting to get my head round it. Good. So this uh, is you back for good then. Yes. No excuses. No, no excuses. No, I'll be back Take for good. Have you, have you got? Have you got like a back challenge? Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, should we go for a boy band instead of the podcast? Then yeah. <laughs> we're already mic. Let's do it. Yeah. Boy band. <laughs> <laughs> Geriatric <laughs> band. <laughs> boy band. Yeah. yeah. Um, are you? Uh, have you got yourself like a? Like a, sh- a schedule you're going to aim for for your videos? No, uh, uh, but I, I am going to try and put out something once a week. Oh yeah. Uh, yes, oh. I am. But it might not be specifically in the format that everybody's used to me because I think no, yeah, entertainment <laughs> and, and having a laugh. I, 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 I've been very much, I think, a follow me type yeah. person. So follow me in experiences, good and bad. Uh, okay. But I think that I've got a little bit to offer from an experience point of view. But I don't want to go down the traditional route that yeah. people are already doing very well. Very cryptic. Yes, I know yeah. what I mean is, 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 is I want to uh, uh, pass on some of the experience that I've got, some of the mistakes that I've made that have led me to the decisions I use now when I shoot, mm. uh, but I don't want to make it into uh, the, for example, the hints and tips videos mm. that are being done very well by other people. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm it's not, different, uh, yeah, uh, because yeah. they're being done very well by other people and I don't follow that that crowd but that. people may watch it and think well you are doing but just calling it something a little bit different oh. but it's more my my 
little nuggets of, of information that have uh, that have come across. Look forward to seeing your little nuggets yeah. very soon. Then. Well, that's it. Yeah, yeah my little nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what happens when you get old. <laughs> yeah. I'll you cross your legs. Like yeah. Says that. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Go on then, Guy. What have you been up your to? Anything nuggets. exciting? That's enough about you. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been up to, mate? Yeah, lakes last week. Did he kill myself? I know. Created three videos. You did that oh, deliberately, though, didn't I you? Did, just for yeah. the video, yeah. yeah. I was genuinely, genuinely did you hurt yourself? scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. myself. Yeah. For so the people rest? that haven't yeah, watched, is it your good wrist or your other wrist? No, it's my other wrist. <laughs> for the people that haven't watched you, what happened? You fell over, didn't you? Yeah, and twice. Was... Well, no, it's yeah, it's that wasn't the bad bit though because that's just being stupid. Mm. You know, when if you're a big lump and you slide, yeah. It's, my fault. Yeah. At the end, there's not, not where there's a blame, there's yeah, a claim. Yeah. Yeah. You slip because you're an idiot. You stood on something that's slippery yeah. and you went over on your ass. You're a bit hard on yourself, yeah, mate. The accidents no, happen. It did hurt. Yeah. My neck and my back and my, yeah. my arm. But at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's that moment when you look and think, right, okay. Did anybody see me? No, well, no. <laughs> that's no, the first thing. No, I was in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. It's like, yeah, right, okay. It didn't hit my head or it yeah. didn't hurt my yeah. head. Then it's like you just feel. Like, oh, that's okay. Oh, I'm all right. <laughs> then you stand up and think, oh, what an idiot, complete idiot. But yeah. I always jump up and say, does anybody see me? No. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Make sure no one sees me first. Yeah. They did, it's like, I'm fine, I'm fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, the scary bit was the bit beforehand was when I was actually walking to try and get close to the lake. And then without realising I was actually walking yeah. on the lake. It's not until I, I literally put my poles down and it went mm. like that straight through and down and down. And I thought, oh, hang on a minute. And then you realise. What, what were you stood on? What did you well, call it? Inter intertwined yeah, grass. Yeah, you had a name for it. You called it the membrane. membrane. Yeah, like a membrane. The membrane. Yeah, it really was, yeah. Uh, but the thing is, well, I, I watched that video, uh, and you you were on the membrane, because you kept saying the membrane, yeah. and, and it's the membrane. Mm. <laughs> you kept saying it. I loved it. And uh, But you kept, you, you kept showing pictures of you with your poles. Pushing through this membrane. Well, it's, no, like, it's, <laughs> what were you hoping that you were suddenly going to find a patch of dry land? No, no, it's, it's, it's the same one once. No, it's the same video. Or something once. pulled him through. All oh, right. <laughs> yeah. No, but, but what I'm trying to do in that instance, right? And I, I was annoyed I didn't cover more of it. Like when I fell over, I broke my pole, mm. right? And I trust my stick. pole. Your stick. My stick, I call yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. What I should have done in that instance, I should have showed people. Right and, and and brought people along on the journey more mm. because I don't do that enough. Mm. I don't do that enough. So when I was stood on that membrane, I was trying to film so people could feel. Oh yeah, oh, oh that, that was a bit scary. Mm, if I was in that position. I was a bit scared. Yeah. You know, I'd be scared as yeah. well. And it's a hard it's, one to illustrate though. It, yes, yeah, I know. It was, it, if, it, even if you know you've seen the footage of what he was doing, where you were, and I, I said to you earlier, I've been in a very similar situation, yeah. and um, you, you try and tell somebody else that you were walking on grass and it was like soft. You know, like yeah. then it's like, no, but it wasn't well, like when you grass. Used, when it you looked the, like grass. When you it used the yeah. pole, but yeah. it was very much. It felt very much like you know when you watch these films and they hear a, a knock downstairs and they get out of bed and go downstairs. Yeah. I was thinking to myself, if I'd have done that with my pole, I'd have turned straight round and walked off. Yeah. But you were mad keen on getting the image, weren't yeah. you? I mean, you got yeah. excited about, well, I'm going to get a great composition mm. from here. Well, I, I, I did a, um, a, like a 16 or I'd 18 shot I pulled out 100mm lens. <laughs> I did a 16 or 18 shot pano yeah. with a 10 stop filter, yeah. but forgot to put my 10 stop filter in. Uh, so I sort of wasted all that time. I was so panicky. Right, mm. seriously. It's Couldn't like, concentrate, yeah. yeah. I, it was like schoolboy errors. Yeah. But I was like, then I was so determined then to make sure I actually grabbed the shot. So did you wait and do your uh, pano again? With the yeah, filter on? Did, yeah, I just so, did a normal pano. So a your pano. professionalism really kicked in there. But isn't there a fine layer there between professionalism and full hardiness? <laughs> I think if you're, if you're filming and you've done all this footage up to it, and you've no. led up to something, and then you decide, oh, I'm just going to turn around, because you, you feel obligated, because you're filming, you've got to do it, because it, the story doesn't make sense, and you've got to, I suppose it does in a way, because you've got to explain to the camera why you, you decided not to. Yeah. But you're committed, really, because you're filming it, you're filming this journey, you think, no, I've got to have the image, after all this, I spoke about it. So you're probably influenced. Thing, you're right, but the thing is, is you know, you, you, when I was watching that video, it reminded me very much of these films where you see people falling under ice. And then the current yeah. gets them slightly, and you can see the whole way you're meant to be. Yeah. And you know you're gone. Yeah, and you that's the thing with that you membrane. Just you just, but unless you know what you're doing, you just would not walk on no. it. No, but, but, no, but it was that scary. membrane. If you'd have fallen through that, and you'd have lost where the hole was, or even trying to get out well, of it. Well, you could have got caught in it. If it was like yeah. long grass underneath, yeah. the grass went underneath, and you tried to come back up. It could have tangled you from underneath, couldn't it? Yeah. I, I wasn't panicking yeah. about about drowning. At the no, end no, day, no. I'm, I'm six foot four. I probably no. wasn't six foot four deep in the middle of the well, town. Yeah, but yeah. But all I thought was, you know, say that. If it's mud underneath. You don't have to be deep. You just have to get stuck. Well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. If yeah. I went through, even if 
if I just got stuck, A, it's yeah. cold, B, yeah. I'm on my own, yeah. it'd have been at night, yeah. you know, I'd have had nobody to talk to, it'd have been oh. shocking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, so, it's something that... Well, it, you'd have been it, missed, mate. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd have got to go on your camera equipment. I'm not, uh, what's it about shooting camera? I just want to take cannon. a photo of him. I want to see a picture of, of him stuck in the mud. Yeah. Like, yeah, come and help me, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely not. I want a photo of you. Yeah. I'm going to vlog it first. <laughs> yeah. I want a selfie with you first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah, I, I, I did that. I did another, another video the following day as well. And I was actually hurting when I was doing that, but did a really good video the following day and uh, just come back from Bournemouth last night. Half yeah, past long, twelve long this morning last night. So I went down to interview a, a lovely photographer, a guy called Mike Brown. He's a, a quite a YouTube sensation. Yes, he is. Yeah, I yeah, didn't yeah, realise yeah. you were going to see him. Two hundred like thousand. Yeah, he's a super. I like fella. him. Yeah, really, really nice. Uh, he's fella. got a really nice. Uh, have you seen Mike Brown? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's got a really nice air to him on camera, hasn't he? Yes. Yeah, like a yes. calming influence. Yeah. Yes. And even though he's he's discussing stuff with you, he doesn't feel like he's teaching you. He's not passionate. Oh, yeah. no. yeah. I had to be on my best behaviour. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> he was such a, were you a lovely guy. Was yeah. Gary Goff schooled? Yeah. No. Did he teach you something? Did you Did you know who you were? No. No. <laughs> no. no I just thought, I so you were just some random knocking on his door. It's interesting it? that he's, 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 how many subscribers has he got? A couple of hundred thousand. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he don't watch other YouTubers. No, what makes it worse, obviously, right? We've been planning this for, for months and you, you'd at least thought he would have just very quickly checked that because the first yeah. thing that his actual, his PA said to me, I'm guessing they probably pre-planned this, but his PA said, so who is Gary Goff? when mm. I walked through the door. So obviously I had to pretty much present myself to the pair of them. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, no, they were they, they were lovely people. She yeah. was lovely. So that's a video, was video, video coming out from that soon now, is it? Yeah, next week, hopefully. Look forward well, to that. Prob probably before, before yeah. this. Yeah. I'm looking probably forward to that. What's more important? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely yeah. watch that because I really like him. Yeah. He he's he, a really nice he's guy. He's a good teacher, isn't he? He's a good teacher. Yeah. 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 You can get that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Very calming. Yeah, yeah, yeah so that's it. Anything and, else? Um, Any, you photographed anything cool? I didn't get back till half twelve this morning. <laughs> How long did it take so to get from Bournemouth up here then? Ooh, five, five and a half hours. So you've had a five and a half hour trip, you've had a five and a half trip and it took me all the 20 minutes to get here today. Yeah. Um, but you know we were talking about bad experiences, we brought this up, we brought this up in uh, Photo Nerds 1.0, uh, but we were talking off camera uh, mm. about your scary experience. Oh, I, 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 I yeah. think that, 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 that one that you were telling us, uh, would you be kind enough to share it? I would. I think, I think it's a good one because um, it puts it all in perspective, really. Basically, I was photographing the coast of Dan Pembrokeshire. It would have been my second ever video had I had the, the guts to put this footage out. And what happened was I dropped, I dropped down the side of this cliff, onto, I left the dog 10 foot on this ledge. Uh, above me so she was out, out of way and there was a little bit of a, of a rock on the edge of the coast so the tide was coming in and I was going to photograph the sunset coming down and the water was going over just like, like a little four, bit of foreground interest and I was just waiting for every seventh wave just to see what the motion of the water was doing and make sure it was safe and it looked completely fine so I thought right okay that rock's going to work fine yeah brilliant the, sun, the light's going to be right in a minute so not long to wait um, it's always dangerous obviously being by the coast you've really got to assess it first and I did that and I looked at the coast and made sure I was safe that's why I put the dog up there I'll be fine um, and I turned around to get the cameras behind me luckily I put the camera behind me on its, it was on the tripod but I was about to lower the tripod and put it down here and as I did that out of nowhere this rogue wave came in and I basically I'd been stood there 15 minutes I had plenty of time to see any rogue waves that were going to change and this rogue wave came in hit that rock went straight over the top of me completely drenched me but threw me against the rocks and it must have been close to up to where the dog was about 10 foot up um, and the dog was like shaking to see, see me getting covered but it was only if you had seen it you'd think that's a relatively small wave but that small wave threw me against the rocks so when I see waves now that are battering against the rocks Powerful, things, isn't it? that would make a lovely photograph I'm going to go down there those waves are nothing well they're 100 times the size of the ones that not me mm. so when I see people photographing near waves you hear about these horrible accidents that happen with photographers there's one quite recently weren't that somebody swept out and i did hear it, that it, what happened it, it, somebody on a workshop got swept out by a wave but the people see these waves and they look at them and think oh that that doesn't look that big i'll be fine yeah. this wave that i when i when i got soaked and i looked back <clears> and i could see that eventually was underwater where i was stood i was thinking hang on a minute that was i could see that rock a minute ago now it's about two foot underwater yeah. i never would have gone down there to take that photograph yeah. the tide changed that much in a split second it yeah. was incredible and that influence, I lost my sunglasses, the sunglasses were on me, they, they, they got knocked into the sea, they were brand new as well, so I lost them. Um, I was gutted about that. So I walked back 
and I was soaking wet and I was quite upset with myself and, and I felt a bit of an idiot and lost a lot of confidence and I sat down and thought, no, I'm going to get a nice photograph, I'm going to calm down, I'm going to get a nice photograph. So I sat there and I wasn't expecting it at all, calmed down by the uh, Manabea, uh, Bay, uh, Manabea Beach, I think it's called in, in Pembrokeshire. Fantastic, fantastic little bay. And it's got the gorgeous sort of moss, um, green moss and rocks that point out and nice little rock pools which reflect. And the sky started to change and I was a bit upset still and I thought, Joe, I'm going to take a photo if it kills me. So I took this picture. <laughs> Almost did. Uh, yeah. So I was soaking wet. I was really quite upset with myself. I was soaking wet. I'd lost all confidence. I'm not going back with that photograph. And I took this shot and the sun just came out beyond the clouds and just overexposed it, clipped the histogram. But I've got that photograph on the wall at home because although it's still a lovely photograph, it clips obviously the histogram clip because the sun came out, but that, every time I look at that picture, reminds me, I can actually see the bit of cliff that I was on. Backstory. So that reminds me. Absolutely. And that was a small wave in comparison to like the Porth Call photographs yeah, you want to see. Yeah. You'll see people standing on them rocks yeah. with those 100 foot waves or 50 foot waves coming up to them, and it's absolutely terrifying. How so that it? small lesson, it's a massive How long have you been vlogging now? Two years. I mean, even two years later, if you did a video about that and showed that picture, that's a really good backstory. That's an interesting vlog, isn't it? Yeah. It is a life, I would like it's a to, life lesson, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is, it really but is. It, it was, it, I was really pleased with myself for actually forcing myself to take a picture. I didn't expect the picture to come out as nice as it did, to be mm. honest, I just wanted a photograph. Um, I didn't film the end of it. And actually, because I was so embarrassed about it, I actually deleted the, really the, 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 foot the, 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 deleted the footage because I was I really was embarrassed. I mean, I lived by the coast for years. I, I know to look after, and you know, yeah. and even that wave, I still would have looked at that wave. Thought that's fine. That's not going to hurt you. F misjudged it by a mile, but things like that, I, I, you, you've got to do. But that was a that was a lesson learned, really. That could have, if the dog was down by me, the dog would have been gone. Yeah. It would have taken the dog in. No worries about it. Because again, it was underwater, two foot. She's only a little cavachon. She's only this far off the floor anyway. So she'd have been gone. No worries about it. I wouldn't have been able to get her. No chance. So that was a lesson learned. So when I see these wave shots, people do. It's absolutely mind blowing. I've got a friend, uh, you know, Dave Pierce, who photographs uh, surfers and nice he sees lad, Dave. people. Awesome photographer. Yeah, well. yeah. He, mm. he, he photographs surfers and stuff, and you see what the water does underneath people, forgetting mm. the fact that it's going to take you off your feet. It's going to, you're going to lose your balance because you can't grip on anything because the water's going underneath you. You've got, no matter how heavy you think you are, that water will take your shirt off. Yeah. So we see people doing these things in big ways. It's like, wow. You mentioned the person in the workshop. Did yeah. they survive? No. So they died no, yeah, yeah. for taking a picture. That's yeah. tragic. I yeah, it's, but it's, it's very sorry for the family. It is, but it, it goes viral and people hopefully learn that these things are, especially if you don't live near the coast and you've got mm. a workshop, you've got 10 people on the workshop, how's that one person going to look after all 10 people? Oh no. Oh, what we're looking for is motion in the water, nice half second shutter, and um, people rush straight away to find a foreground. They don't think about the waves and the consequences. No. And all they're worried about is getting the gear splashed. I mean, mm. Nick Page has got a fantastic story about that bowl in, um, in America that he was photographing. I've, I've seen the footage of where he is, and it's, it's terrifying when the water goes round. And I can imagine he had to ram his tripod down to, to stop him from going mm. uh, with it. And I can imagine, I've seen them waves. I can imagine, well, I can't imagine, there's nothing like what I experienced, but I can imagine that's a hundred times more. So it's just like, yeah, just lesson learned. Yeah, I've, I've seen some of his recent stuff, uh, yeah. the, the wave shots, Nick Page's wave shots in his vlog. It's uh, absolutely amazing. Yeah. Last, yeah. last year, I was with Grant Hyatt as a um, wall camping. And, and who's, who's Grant Hyatt? He's just a friend of mine lives in Brecon Beacons, a photographer, more of a hiker than a camper than a photographer, mm. but he's, he's very good at all three, and he's really good at knowing the area. And we, we hiked up uh, Penavan in the snow, and we were taking, I took a really nice photograph of Orion Constellation was at the top of Penavan, so that lined up nice with the edge of this uh, mountain going up to, to the summit of Penavan, stars in the background, Orion was really nice and prominent. Had this detail of this, you know, when you get the nice layers where the winds drifted the snow. Yeah. So this nice texture going up here sort of thing. And Grant was stood there with his head torch on because he was taking a picture from the top. So really nice photograph. And I was like, standing on this snow, and uh, Grant shouted down, Gary, what are you doing? Get off, you're not on land. And what I'd actually done is I'd actually walked to the edge of this snowdrift. You're to on get, an overhang. I was on an overhang. Mm. And, but what was below me is the, sh it's not the, the gradual side yeah. of Penavan, it's the sheer side of Penavan that if I'd have gone down. How far was it? What was it? The drop. Oh, a couple of hundred meters, isn't it? Dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Jesus but you'd be knocked Christ, out and you'd that, drown that, because it's snow as well. So you'd yeah. be knocked out and drown. So you, you, but that, when I realized that, where I was, scary. I jumped off and I looked at where the path was. And I know that walk. And I know where I was standing, and it is mm. very lucky. Um, 
that's, that I've got that scary. photograph. That photograph's on my wall as well. Because I got excited, I seen this opportunity with the photograph, I thought that would make a lovely leading line because of the detail in the snow. All I've got to do is concentrate on getting the photograph, ram the tripod in, and why that snow? I mean, luckily, the snow must have been 10 foot thick. Mm. But do you know what? If you'd have put the tripod in anymore, if it had spikes on it or something yeah. like that, you're gone. If, you're you're a, if gone. you were a cat, you'd have used two out of your seven <laughs> lives, haven't you? Yeah. No, I, yeah. I did, we, we did the same thing when we went to Harris and Lewis. Uh, Gary Beaumont, me, me, me good photography friend, we went up the top of this mountain and it was all full of snow. And of course the dog was wandering and then we realised the dog had wandered and we could see it from our angle but the dog couldn't and he was literally on an overhang. Yeah. And you're both looking, thinking, oh my God, what do you do? You, you know, yeah, yeah. If you shout the dog, he might just get yeah, like yeah. snow drift as well. It's very difficult to see. Not, not actually sure how much the dog could see. Yeah. In the end, you're trying, like, trying to coax it back so it didn't jump yeah. or anything like that. And eventually it came off straight on the lead. But your heart pumps. Yeah. And that's just for the dog. Mm. So I couldn't imagine what it would be yeah. like for you. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky that I've learned these that. lessons Absolutely. on. I'm very... Um, I'd be very lucky with learning these lessons. A lot of people get like one shot at it, and then they do. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's been a few people <clears throat> and I've followed on social media that have had been out walking in the woods, disappeared through like a rabbit hole or something, where the where the where the, the grounds caved and, and oh. done both their legs in, mm. and it's it's like. You, you couldn't. You, you can't preempt that. You can't. No, you, no. Unless you stay on a path, you want to go. Well, as a photographer, in, you want to get off the path. You would stay in, in your house. You wouldn't go outside, yeah. would you? Yeah. So you, you, you're thinking. Hang on a minute. How are you going to? You, you can't make this mistake. Then get away with it. Then learn. Because no. sometimes, flipping out. Know, it's horrendous. It's look on the draw, but, mate. It's, not, it's yeah. you know you go through life and. Uh, yeah. uh, you either you get through the day or you don't. Yeah, you but just even my insurance wouldn't cover me. I'm self-employed. No. Yeah, and if I hurt myself like this, yeah. I always worry if I go snowboarding. If I broke my hands falling over, mm. uh, my insurance won't cover me enough to pay my bills and live. It's funny you, know, you, you mentioned yeah. snowboarding. When yeah. I first went skiing, when we were coming back, we stopped at Toulouse, I think it was, for a break, and you could see all the new scope snowboarders because there was about forty of them. There's about seven or eight coaches there. Mm. All in splints because obviously yeah. when you go over they on a snowboard, they'll break that as well, they'll yeah. break that. Clavicle and the yeah. wrist, scaphoid. Yeah. Yeah. But scaphoid on a snowboard, there's nothing yeah. to do with photography, but it, even if you fall, uh, uh, your scaphoid is a real pain mm. to, to, to heal. It takes more well, than If it's my right hand, I can't work because yeah. I can't use a camera from my right yeah. hand. I'm absolutely buggered. You can't use a camera left handed, can you? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Imagine Funnily that. enough, I mentioned this in the past. I think I did anyway. I'd gone full auto again, then, wouldn't I? <laughs> from, from, from a safety point of yeah. view. A friend of mine's in the medical profession and he always has a go at me when we go out walking or anything because he says, you've not got hand free. Uh, because the number of serious, I mean, life-changing head injuries where somebody's walking with a camera in one hand and a bottle in the other hand, hiking, and you've not got time to save yourself. And he said it's one of the, other than a trauma in a car accident, it's a really common, mm. really common injury. Well, my, my fall could have been really bad because if you think these are metal poles designed to take my weight, yeah. and when I went down on it, obviously I must have still been holding it or whatever. Or you moved. snapped it. It could have gone into you. It snapped it. That could have gone into yeah. me. Yeah. Mm. And even if I only went in an inch, if I was incapacitated and couldn't move, I could have just bled to death. Something as ridiculous as that. But I mean, that's just the luck of the draw with anything though, isn't it? Mm. I rolled mm. down anything. the side of a cliff um, in, in Gower. <laughs> and this is one when I... I this I, is three out of the nine lives. <laughs> oh mate, this, this was a bad one because um, I had uh, my low pro whistler bag on my back, which is, people say it's too heavy, but it's rock solid. Right? And I had my camera in my hand, my Fuji was in my hand. I was just walking around looking for competitions or whatever. And then I thought, you know, I'm not going to make it for sunset across the top of the peaks. I'll run, I'll run down the side of, of, the, of the cliff and, um, and get a low angle shot with one of the rock pools or something. Yeah. And I, as I decided, I was running, as I decided to change direction, my foot caught a branch under the sand um, and I went over. But the bag, because it's rock solid, I rolled down, the bag saved me. Because every time mm. I rolled on a rock or anything like that, the bag saved me. Yeah. But then I fell and landed um, on, on the boulders at the bottom like that, that sort of position. I had the camera in this hand and it landed like this and my hands went down to the rocks and obviously I jumped up because there was a guy training for some sort of triathlon so he's running up and down the sand dunes. Sand dunes. There's a couple of girls on horses. So I jumped up. Is anybody around? <laughs> ah, flipping it. And I, I, it took me about 10 minutes to pick up the courage to try and bend my hand because like, all the rocks had crushed the fingers. I was like, right, okay, I've got to try. And they were fine, obviously. And then I looked at where I rolled down. I thought, do you know what? Not, not any pain at all other than my pride and the fact that my hand was throbbing. Yeah. But if I hadn't have had the camera bag on my back, I, I, reckon, I, I reckon I'd have been there. Uh, I reckon it, it did save me because there's a few rocks I would have hit on the way down that I didn't feel. 
It's funny that because yeah. I, I did do some Edinburgh Award as a kid and we were perched on the cliff. It was about a 50 foot drop, this cliff. And a mate of mine, my, my best mate, tried to walk around me. And I said, you can't get around this way. So the, and he said, we'll move over. I said, I can't move over. There's nowhere to go. So he, he tried to walk around me and he fell off the cliff. Oh, and he bounced. Oh, have you ever seen The Simpsons where Homer yeah. Simpson bounces yeah. off rocks? He bounced off every single rock. He had a huge backpack on his back. And he bounced off every single rock. And then he landed on his back in a, a marsh bog. It was in the peaks. It was on Bleak Low Head um, and in the Snake Pass. And he landed on his back, not a scratch on him. Yeah. Oh, I should have done coat. My new coat was ripped. I'd only just arrived that day. And I put it over uh, another coat, and it all all here. I'd send it back to Rav to get restitched. Um, it was quite quite a funny one, but literally, I mean, that's complete. You know, it's not my fault. I just caught my foot under a branch, sort of thing, sent me over. But being in the been outdoors, isn't it? I've been lucky, Kill you. Yeah. But it's, you always do it on your own. You yeah. always do. It was that fall actually. Let, the missus said to me, "Oh, if you, so, if you'd have bought, the, if you'd have just sent the drone up, would you have got the shot?" I was like, "Yeah, sure. I'm going buy a drone." Then I was like, mm. "There we are. <laughs> oh, it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to buy a drone. It's safe. Yeah. Right? I'm going to climb the mountain. Just send Come the drone on. up." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is there anything that you could, have you changed your habits? Have you, do you take anything with you now that you didn't take before? And do you have any safety gear or any way of contacting people? Do you let people know, for example, before you're going out, where you're going and when you're going to be back? No, <laughs> I probably should. <laughs> yeah. I should. Um, I'll, no, because on occasion I'll go straight from work down to the beach or whatever. And um, I work. Are you an outdoorsy minutes. type of guy? Yeah. Is your background outdoors? Um, it is. When you were younger? It is, but not to the, the photography has definitely brought me more outdoors. It's definitely made me go to places that you wouldn't normally go and you, you'd walk along the edges of cliffs because you're looking for a composition. Yeah. If you weren't, you'd just go on the path. So photography's definitely done that. Um, but no, I, you are right. You should definitely make safety first, isn't it? You should definitely, especially if you're going to a place that you're off the path. You're perhaps never going to be found. Mm. So yeah, there is the element of that. Not to bring a negative down to the... <laughs> it's not a negative. I think it's vitally, vitally yeah. important I really yeah. do. That so, you've either got the technology in place. So when we used to go up into the mountains, we had something called a spot, right? Which didn't work off uh, phone signals. It was a GPS, GPS system yeah. that when you pressed it, it sent an SOS. Mm -hmm. And it's, can we worked internationally now? What I didn't realise is if I'd have used it abroad, I'd have got a huge bill from the rescue services to come and collect me. But in this country, as far as I'm aware, yeah. if you press it, it's free of charge. And Mountain Rescue will come to you and find you. Uh, and then mobile phones obviously have some, uh, uh, but it, I would presume it'd be dependent on signal. Yeah. But, you know, just something as simple yeah. as texting your other half and yeah. say, I'm at well, such and such yeah. a car park, and I will text you yeah. in four hours. If I was camping, then definitely. You, 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 you're there with other people, but you're also saying, like, we're going up Penavana, we're going up Snowden, yeah. we're going to camp on Irgarn or whatever. <clears throat> yeah. Um, this is where we're going to be. So, and it's, I'd never go anywhere. It's, you know what? I mean, all these places, especially Snowdonia, you're never far from somebody who's going to be passing anyway. It, it's that popular, isn't it? If you went to somewhere like Alaska or Greenland or parts of Iceland, which is so remote, the idea of hiking through Iceland is phenomenal. Some, some parts are so remote, you're going to get some incredible um, opportunities. Yeah, but, but if you're, you're never going to get, we, we drove for like four hours between locations in Iceland. It was yeah, but it's that complacency though, Gareth, because you, you're, you're walking and you could be uh, walking along the path, you slip, you fall down and you're out of view. Uh, and you could be uh, next to a road even, and uh, people just don't know you're there. It's, mm. it, you don't have to be in a remote location, do yeah. you? Uh, but it, you know, it takes a two-second job, isn't it? Just I, to I don't normally. Text on. I don't normally bother, but I told the wife when I went out the door because I knew I, where I was going. I had no phone signal mm. at all. I ran about the Thirlmere reservoir area. There's mm. absolutely no phone signal whatsoever. So Is I that where you went with that membrane? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Uh, was yeah. that Thirlmere? Yeah, well, it was above there, yeah. um, Harrop Tan. Yeah. So what I actually said to her that, uh, look, if I'm not back by 10 o'clock, that's where I'm going yeah. and that's the car park. No, I never ever say that. No. So you can imagine how gutted she was when I turned when you back When came, <laughs> <laughs> came home. Yeah. Can, you imagine, really can you imagine Don in the boots and actually going out at 10 o'clock <laughs> looking for you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. give it a couple of weeks, Gary, just to see, like, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just in case you were playing a I trick on me. I wasn't enjoying that. I thought you, yeah, you maybe you'd gone looking for his drone or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just think there's some really simple tips that we can follow that, that can be the difference between, between life and death. Yeah. 
And yeah. it sounds really, really uh, But nothing's a problem that, until it's it? a problem, though, is it? It sounds really, really dramatic. But, yeah. I mean, I, I've almost uh, got stuck um, in the Peak District before now, Bleakley Wedding, when it's got, got fogged in. And the number of rescues that occur every year, I mean, it's a relatively low hill, but what happens <clears> is it gets covered in fog and it's thick with peat and there's no landmarks no, up yeah. there at all. It's, it's, going, things yeah. have changed a lot now because yeah. if you've got a phone with GPS on and stuff like that and, yeah. uh, and um, what they call GPS trackers and stuff, mm. but people still get stuck up there if they're injured and stuff. Mm. And it's not I remember getting stuck job. in an av av avalanche, heavy uh, snow um, flurry in, in France on a, in a ski resort. <laughs> and it's it's come from an avalanche, yeah, it's a snow yeah. flurry. Well, no, it was, it, was, it was heavy snow, but then I struggled with altitude pressure, so I couldn't even stand up. And I was, my missus was then on ski, she tried to sort of very, very slowly go down this slope, and we couldn't see where we were going, ended up being a, we were very, well, I was very new into snowboarding at the time, and I was struggling to even stand up, and I just needed to get out of the altitude, but uh, because the snow was coming down, it was just sliding. So it was kind of like being on an avalanche because you could, I was on a snowboard, you couldn't carve because as you were carving down the snow, you were just sliding on fresh slow, snow that was coming down. So it was terrifying. I couldn't concentrate, banging out, I couldn't stand up because of the altitude pressure and because of the, it was just- Well, you have altitude sickness. I don't, I can't do like diving or deep sea diving and stuff right. like that. I've tried it once or twice and I just literally can't do even a couple of meters. Right. Um, even if you come up, go down and come up and down, I just can't do it. Really? And the, 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 the altitude, I know I'm probably not going to be able to really do unless i spent a long time up there but gradually, yeah yeah it's but interesting. my friends went up kilimanjaro and out of about eight or nine that went only one or two of them made it yeah so it's really how weird. is kilimanjaro yeah, <clears throat> yeah. But, but it's um, interesting talking about altitude sickness because have you watched have you been watching thomas eaton's um uh, vlogs from nepal i have yeah yeah i have as well yeah. and i found it fascinating i actually commented and said it would take five or six uh um BBC bots to create the level of um, production that he did. Somebody came on and contradicted me and said, have you watched holiday ones? But it's absolutely brilliant uh, uh, what he's done. And that, the same thing happened to him. Yeah, got I, to it's on my, I mean, my girlfriend's sister's been on the base camp and it's something I'm so, so jealous of. I've seen mm. the photographs of it. It's he didn't so, make it. He didn't no, make I don't think I camp. would. I don't he, know got, he got to 16,000 feet, I think. Yeah. yeah. There's it's something like that. Right. And, uh, I, I'd um, like to, I mean, Skiing in the Alps, I suppose some of them are high, and if you don't, so if you suffer with it, it don't have to be that high, do they? It's mm. just I just know that how different the Alps are to something like the Himalayas is ridiculous. No, I know it is. I, I mean, took I took the mic on that video. Did you? Yeah, yeah you I did, think yeah. that's why I fell over on my ass <laughs> because it, it's quite cold. It can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I said I know exactly how he feels because I was about thirty meters above yeah. sea level. I had no oxygen. Yeah, I was struggling yeah. to breathe. That's just been unfit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that was the joke. <laughs> over ten thousand, over ten thousand feet, and your body starts to feel it. Yeah. And you're uh, not supposed to be up that high. Yeah, no, that's what they say. No. That your body's not supposed to be at their altitudes. You are literally starting you have to, to die. Condition yourself, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. When you start mm. to get over sixteen, seventeen thousand feet. Definitely, yeah. 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 Well, it's not uh, natural. I, mean, I, I, I skied in Colorado and uh, 11, 12,000 feet was the, uh, the lowest point. But there were still people walking around on oxygen and stuff mm. at 12,000 mm. feet. Mm. It could really affect. But it's my idea of mountain climbing, though, mm. because apparently to. Um, to to, to make your body adjust to it, you've got to like climb for a day, then yeah, so rest come back for two down days. Again. Come back down again. <laughs> the cycle is longer than, the actual re the recovery is longer yeah, than yeah. the experience. They, they go up and then they come down, and they go up and they come down, and they go up and they come down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A, lot, a lot of people when they go up to Machu Picchu, which is like a, takes, I think our friends did it, it took, it took uh, six days to get up it, because they go up so gradually, mm. they go up so slow, it's such a long walk. Like, Mm. I think that would be the way I have to do anything like that because mm. uh, I'd like to try it though. Maybe I'll surprise myself. This was about 10 years ago. So, uh, it's interesting. But they say it... as well, if you've got a cold, diving. One of my friends was, uh, who I was with um, was a diving instructor and she said, if you've got a cold or anything like that, and I was like, no, I don't get colds. I'm, I'm lucky like that. And apparently, if you, if you are susceptible to colds, things like pressure is, is amplified if you've got a cold, even if you can't feel the cold. Mm. Yeah. So it could have been that, that as a factor. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps if I tried it again. But, yeah. You yeah. have to be careful flying as, uh, if, you go, if you're diving. X number of hours before you can, before you can fly. Yeah, from one exchange mm. to the other. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Mm. Um, and the number of people, because I, 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 I used to fly professionally uh, uh, when I was 18, 19, used to teach, and uh, the number of people that have been killed from getting hypoxic. So you just mm. feel great. It's like it's like you know people who drink and drive. Yeah. They, they, th they think they're in control of the car. Same thing. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Great video though. Great way to die.
Hypoxia, lack of oxygen is a great way, not altitude sickness. Why is it a great way? How is any, how's anything a great way well, to die? Because, <laughs> because you feel drunk and woozy and then you just fall asleep. It's, oh. uh, um, um, the, Isn't uh, just getting drunk and woozy a better way of doing it though? No, because you, <laughs> if you don't wake up. <laughs> that sounds a bit more fun. <laughs> yeah. If you don't wake up, but yeah, it is, it's, it's a pleasant Yeah, without the walking. Yeah, yeah. So you just get drunk and woozy. Yeah. In fact, they looked at like it, name, you know, capital punishment. <laughs> yeah. Capital punishment in America. They looked at alternatives, mm -hmm. and uh, if you put somebody in a room and fill it full of nitrogen, all they'll do is, is they'll feel great and then they'll fall yeah. asleep and, and then they die. But they won't uh, allow it because they're, it's too <clears> humane. <throat> <laughs> yeah. Nothing to do with photography, that. But I was just fact. thinking, photography yeah. podcast. Yeah. How do we end up? Yeah, yeah. Well, we always on do, health we and always, safety. Tangent. You, didn't I, the <laughs> That's three talking about health and safety. That's it. The coffee. But, I mean, photography. Photography going out mm. into the outdoors. That's huge, isn't it? Yeah. And that's what we're talking about is outdoors. I mean, if somebody can take anything away from this podcast, if they can tell somebody that where they're going, then ooh, a great podcast. And uh, we're not recording this, are we? I yeah. Am. Oh, yeah. that's right. Okay. Sorry, I'm not sound like I'm preaching now. Didn't think we were live. I must admit that when I went on my ass, the first thing I thought of was, "What an idiot!" Because, because yeah. really, if you fall over, you, it's, it's so embarrassing. It's, it's, more often than not, right? You, it's embarrassing it's first. Yourself then you to think blame. of the pain. You're yeah. yourself to blame, though, isn't it? Really? I, I, don't, no, I don't. I blame the ice. What's the ice doing? Yeah. <laughs> that really thin ice I was walking. Who put on. that log there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't. I'm not embarrassed if I fall oh, I over. I think, ouch. If somebody else falls over, I find it the funniest thing oh, in the world. I do. Are you okay? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, well, I can laugh now. Then. It's no, a, it's I'd right. laugh first. My daughter's got the same thing. If I fall over, I find it so embarrassing. Yeah. So embarrassing. I'm all right. Yes, okay, all right. It's just my pride then. <laughs> I, if anybody sees me, I'm like, oh, yeah. kills me. Well, maybe, maybe, because I fall over so many times, and maybe I've just got used to it. But I remember going out with my daughter in the woods, and her, one of her best friends fell over. And my daughter started laughing, and I couldn't shout at my daughter because that's what I'd do with one of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> you trip them up. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not that gravitious, but I, I laugh at, in, in opportunity, uh, at the wrong moments, uh, things that you're not meant to laugh at. Just do like a trait with me. You don't go to funerals. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, if I was walking along and there's a photographer in a tree and the photographer fell out, <laughs> start laughing. Just well, everybody would. Yeah, well, no, but you wouldn't. You expect an apple you, to fall out. You, you, no, what you would most probably do is you most probably run up and say, You're all right, mate. No, you know my daughter said, What are you doing laugh. in that tree? <laughs> then you laugh. I, I just, what were you doing I, in the tree? I, I, just, I just laugh. <laughs> what were you doing in that tree, Paul? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> kick you, then say yeah. you're right. And kick you again if you yeah. said yes. <laughs> Do we yeah. have a second topic? I think we were going to discuss so, uh, the coffee situation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to know. <laughs> oh, it's going to buy gold. me one. Mm. I'm not really up to speed on this, so fill me in. So, it's um, it's become common amongst the, uh, like, amongst it, it's basically an option. Some uh, YouTubers and social media influencers have, have given their subscribers the the option to, to be able to pay for their their trips away um, if they, if they need sort of gear for their channel or to help. We're not just talking photography now. We're talking all YouTubers, all Insta, all you know, all these big. You know, all it's right. basically if you enjoyed my content. You can pay me X Buy amount, me and coffee. then I can. Yeah. What's the it, difference it, between that and Patreon then? As far as I understand it, coffee thing is based on like a one-trip thing. I want to do this. I want to buy this. I want to go there. I want to bring you guys with me. You enjoy my content. Make a one-off payment of a fiver. You can just yeah, three quid. I think it's supposed to be. That's why they call coffee. It's the equivalent of a coffee, and then obviously I'll be able to go. If I don't have that, then obviously I can't afford to go. So the grey area is: if you can't afford to go, don't go. I think the Patreon, I think, is an ongoing subscription to oh, right. channel. I, I, as I understand it, it's. If you're a patron of the channel, you're paying a month, yeah. ongoing, for whatever that that content. Yeah. It's a paid subscription, I guess. Similar right. money, similar money. I suppose I think you've got an option to select how much money you want to go, yeah. but they'll have a. It will just be an ongoing thing. Whatever happens to that channel, you're 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 paying, you're contributing financially. Whereas coffee is literally, I want to do this trip, I want to buy this product, I can't afford it. Can you help me? And yeah, it's it's caught, it's a grey area. Where's the negativity with it? A lot of people are saying if you can't afford it, you don't have it. If you can't afford to go there, you can't go there. There are two schools of thought. Number one is it seems, and this seems, I don't know whether this is an English thing. I don't know whether it's an English thing because the Americans seem a lot more gong ho about and less embarrassed to ask for stuff and to sure. charge for stuff. Yeah. Uh, but 
So the, the feedback I've uh, I read is some people think it's begging, yeah. or the person that's doing it will say I'm not begging, mm -hmm. but, uh, and other people say, well, nobody funds my trips. Yeah. Uh, I have to go out, and yeah. if I get the image, I get the image, and if I don't, I don't. But I disagree with both of those personally because I, I, if somebody asks me for three quid for a coffee, I'll give them three quid for a coffee. I'm not, don't worry me. Uh, it's not something I will do on my channel, by the way, so I'm not doing it as a precursor. But I, I, I don't, it, it doesn't worry me if somebody asks me for three quid to go away on a trip and they want to raise funds. It's like they're just giving pages and stuff like that. It doesn't worry me, and I, I, I give to that. If I'm interested in that influencer, yeah. So I'm watching yeah. Gary Goff and you say, you know what, I'm going to go uh, to, I don't know, where Where did we mention last year? You're going to go to Iceland. The, no, 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 no the, the, the fields, the lavender fields. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 And you yeah. said, but I can't really afford it, but Just I'm going to do a couple of really great videos uh, and I'm asking you to equivalent buy me a coffee, which is three quid and I'm raising 600 quid. I wouldn't have a problem with it. And I, I think, think it's the way it's asked. Yeah. I think if, if you're keeping the money in the channel, they're yeah. getting something back. Yeah and you're helping someone that basically you watch for free. It's yeah. the way you ask for it. Mm. Um, I, think, I don't think it should upset people. I think that's what's happened with social media. People are, and, and on the comments on some of the videos I've seen, that people have got angry, upset, and uh, a, a single, really? or a single, yeah, it's, 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 I well, think, I think there's a difference it's between, snowballed. I think there's, there's a difference between me asking for money to support a trip I can't afford to go on, yeah. as opposed to, oh, by the way, if you enjoyed my content from my trip last yeah. week or last month to Iceland, then as a way of showing your appreciation, I'd appreciate if you bought me a coffee. Yeah. I think, I think they're two different things. Yeah. In what way? Sorry. Just to, well, I think, yeah. You know, if you know I travel a lot and you like what I do and I say, look, if you like my content, I really appreciate if you just show that by buying me yeah. a coffee. Yeah. There's three pounds. Thanks a lot, Gary. Loved your content from last month. It was great. Yeah. However, I want to go to Iceland. I can't afford to go to Iceland. So will you give me three pounds to help me afford to go yeah. to Iceland? Then I think I think that's different. Yeah. In, I think they're very they're two very different things. Yeah. I think, the same, I think it's the way it's worded. They're the same mm. thing, they're just communicated differently. Yeah, it's the way it's worded. Well I think I've watched yes. a few people yeah. that yeah. say that and I, they've said it for ages and I've never actually noticed what they're saying until this has come about, this coffee thing. So what they've said is um, uh, if you enjoy my channel and you'd like to support the channel, there's a link in the bottom. Now, I've never even thought about what the sentence is or even clicking on that link or even what that link was going to. Yeah. It, it never entered my mind. It's only because of this conversation or this um, this uh, issue that's come about that I thought actually for all these videos I've been watching for ages particularly in America that sort of said if you enjoy the content you can support the channel by clicking this link that is all they're saying they're not saying um, I want to take time off work to go and do this and I can't do it because so, but if you pay me I can ah. it's, it's worded differently and is that, that happens, coffee, really, is that the coffee thing is that the coffee that link is that no, coffee no I think or is that's it a more thing? Patreon because they're, right. they're not giving you the coffee thing is more about funding a specific Topic right. of events, or, oh, right. or, yeah. or like you want to do a, a bit like just giving, but for a non charitable cause. <laughs> so you're aiming, yeah. you're me. aiming. Well, you're, I'll set yeah. myself up as a charity, it's okay then. Yeah, but you're aiming. Yeah. So, so somebody wants 500 quid and they'll ask for contributions until they reach that goal. Yeah, so right. let's just say it's 500 quid, and the object is that you want to go away for a week and film in a certain location, but you've got to take time off work. You know, these people are enjoying the content, but you can't, you can't take that time off work you can't do that video but you you know you know the people are going to want it i mean i don't see it, i don't see the issue myself it, asking for it i think it's the way it's put across mm. i think if mm. you just say if you enjoy supporting the channel i've got a few trips planned i'd like to be able to do more if you enjoy and want to support the channel then you know contribute right. here you're not obliged I don't see why and this is what's upset me is why people have got upset and angry about it and and, and that, singled people out that, and, that, that, that's the big thing for me right so if somebody asked me for three quid a youtuber asked me for three quid for a coffee mm. I either don't give him the three quid yeah. or I think to myself well I don't agree with what you're saying there mm. and, that's, begging, yeah, I, yeah. and I'll, I unsubscribe mm. yeah that's it or, yeah. and it, or if the individual wants to. Would it to. cause you to unsubscribe though, just by somebody saying? Some people. For example, what, what, what do people give thumbs down for? What, what do you see people within two minutes of putting yeah, a video out that you've got four thumbs downs? It's, it's, some people it's, like it's, that. It's a bit they? dramatic though, isn't it? Just saying, like, I want to improve my channel. I know, you, I know you like what I do, I want to improve it. 
Um, but, but I can't really afford to do it any more than I am doing because it is YouTube. You don't really get paid from YouTube. Even if you've got tens of thousands of subscribers, you're not getting paid from YouTube or Amazon links or you know any of it really. You're not getting any income. You spend a lot of money on YouTube doing this stuff. And if you say, well, I really want to do this, I want to make the channel bigger, better, I want to get better lighting, I want to do more trips, I want to go travel to Europe, meet other people, do free walks or whatever. If, if, if you the, wanted to do, support the channel so I could do that, here's a link to do it. The problem is it's a new thing. Oh yeah, it's exactly. New. Because yeah. when I set up my business, the only person I could get a loan from was either mum and dad uh, uh, or the bank. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I, I had to take that risk. And I think when you read uh, uh, comments, I think the comments would be, mm. or when I started out, I had to put the miles in and blah, 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 blah to build my business up. But we didn't have YouTube and we didn't have social influencers back no. then. And we didn't have coffee. We didn't have no. Just Giving and we didn't have those. No. So things have changed, haven't they? Yeah, I wouldn't do it myself because it goes against the grain for me. If I want something, I work for it. And I appreciate it because sometimes it takes a while to do so. And if I spent my money on it, then it means more to me. Mm. Right? I would never even ask a friend, really, mm. and, you know, it, it, help me out with this. I want to go on a, a trip, even if they enjoy sure. my videos. I wouldn't even ask a friend for that. So asking somebody who's just a, not say just a subscriber, but somebody you don't know, is is foreign to me. It wouldn't make sense. What so what the, the whole drama's come about is like, whoa, people blowing this out of proportion now. All they're doing is giving you an option to support the channel, which you might want to do. You mm. might want to support that channel. If, if I said to you, oh, I'd love to do photo walks, say if you watch my street photography, you want to do photo walks in Germany and stuff, oh, if you ever come to Germany, I'm never going to be able to afford to go. If, if that person was given the op option to, to give you three pounds and there was 10 of them, to, you know, there's, it might be scoped to actually actually go. If you gave them that option, you don't know, you might be missing out. It wouldn't be something I'd do, but the, the, op the, the technology's there to enable them to do it, to mm. support you, to take more time off work, to invest more into your channel. So, I don't know. People spend charge out too much for workshops and something like that. Where do you justify the difference? So it's yeah, yeah, I get they're getting something in return with a workshop, but there has to be a line. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's there is a bit of a grey area there. But I think, like you say, with time it'll, it'll settle down. The I think, settle down. I think if somebody's giving, if somebody's putting free content out there, and if they ask the question, "Would you like to support my channel?" Yeah. As long as the question is ten seconds long, then you move on. It's down to the viewer. The viewer's choice is, "Shall I shout I?" Mm. If it's bang in your face, bang in your face, yeah. bang in your face, then obviously the, the creator isn't doing themselves any favour no. there. But if it's a simple, I really would appreciate. Anyway, thanks a lot. See you yeah. on the next week. Boom, goodbye. Then that's very simple, very sweet. Yeah. And you make it's a conscious properly. decision. Do I or don't I? It's no big deal. No, it's not. That's as exactly as, my yeah, point. And, I agree. Yeah. I would never do it. But like you said, the way it's worded, if you want to help my channel, you can do this. Thanks very much for watching. Um, and people are given the option. They're not sort of saying, if you don't help my channel, you're going to block you from watching the thing. You know, they're not saying, oh, um, help my channel so I can bug off and buy a new car or I can buy, go on holidays with my family or take time off work and Skype or whatever. It's going, as long as it's the money's staying back into the channel. Uh, I don't really see the need for the drama. Should we ask the viewers to buy us coffee? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, only, the, only reason Earl want, tea, the only reason I'd want them to buy me Joke. a coffee is, is your coffee's terrible coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Buy him a coffee machine. <laughs> yeah, buy him a coffee machine. Send us some money. Well, I think, I think mm. honestly, uh, it's not something I would do. No. Um, uh, but not, not for the reasons. It's just it won't enter my head. But maybe you know. But you're it, saying years to come, things change. It's acceptable. Everybody else is doing. It's in, like, in ten yeah. years' time, it will be the, the because because well, I'm going to say. Is it the Squarespace of the future? Like, yeah. You know, you know. I mean, something's got to change with YouTube because um, you're going to end up with just a, a few very very big names and um, uh, people are never going to be able to get in there if you know what I mean I mean there are a lot of people out there I'm not so I'm not going to mention talk about landscape photography or photography but there are a lot of people out there that are putting out, out exceptional content and are making no money at yeah. all and are doing it for the for love, love of it yeah. right and so there are people that watch and think a significant minority yeah, who watch and think, well, actually, they're raking it in. Mm. They're actually uh, raking it in. Mm. Now, I'm not a big YouTuber. I cleared my uh, funds out of three years and uh, just over a million views, and I took $700 out. $700. And I've been all over the country mm. filming. And people say, people could say, well, you, you go out and you film. You go out and take pictures anyway. What's the problem? Yeah, I go out and take pictures, but I don't go out with a video camera and then spend hours and hours editing as well. And my driver has never been to make money on YouTube, as you're quite well aware. I mentioned it in the photo nerds um, thing here. It's a bit of fun. 
Um, but there are people out there that are putting those hours and hours and hours in, and people are getting the benefit by watching. And I think the polite thing to do is if you disagree with them, just start watching. Don't write a big tirade to some guy or lady who's, who, who's spent a lot of time and effort mm. to go out a video yeah. if you disagree with them. Just think, you know what, I could all go watch someone yeah, else. You can't work some further than that, though. People have posted on social media, single people out, make, like almost a bullying situation where they've actually mentioned other people, mm. singled them out, got everybody on onto them, sort of saying they're doing this, they're trying to be something. And um, I don't, I don't, I, I can't abide that. I just think that's, that's mm. singling someone out and making a mockery of them mm. because they're trying to better themselves. I think that that's where mm. the problem is. But if just by asking, yeah, obviously it's the way you are, the way you word it, isn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah. There's, there's no excuse for for that. No. At all. Bullying, no. no. At no. all. Uh, um, because uh, there are numerous people that have done it. Uh, um, the coffee thing, mm. uh, numerous landscape photographers that have done it and I think that, that what we're referring to there is, is, is one person that seems to have got all the flack for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's very unfair and yeah. I, I know the chap personally yeah. and he, he's actually a nice guy yeah. and, and it's upset him yeah. greatly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, Just for trying uh, to better his channel. Yeah. Uh, 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 and, yeah, we're all sensitive. The trouble is, is, is people watch watch it us and they'll see me here six foot approaching fifty, a gruff guy, and think, yeah, well, he can take it. Well, mm. sometimes so we are sensitive underneath. Mm. I mean, it, it is really sad. As long as, as my thoughts are, like you said, if somebody asks correctly and didn't sound like they're begging, then it's up to the the, the viewer. Just say yes or no. But move on. Yeah, I'd I don't complain about it. I'd appreciate people's thoughts on it, actually, mm. comments on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's it's quite an interesting topic. So it if is. you do want to support the channel, <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, um, yeah, this is blown up all over social media apparently. So if you do have any thoughts on it yourself personally, then mm. um, uh, leave a, a comment yeah. below and let but us know your thoughts. What I will say is, don't get personal because if you get personal, yeah, don't we'll, get, we'll don't delete get the comments. Yeah, yeah, don't get arsy because we're not. Don't get arsy, but uh, we are genuinely interested in uh, yeah. your thoughts on yeah. this matter. Right, that's oh. it. Done, dusted. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. So two. Yeah, right, job done. Brilliant. That was good fun. Yeah, cool. <laughs> right, see you next week.